आज से मैं क्लास ट्वेल्थ के फिजिक्स के चैप्टर्स शुरू करने जा रहा हूं पहला चैप्टर क्लास ट्वेल्थ में आप जानते हैं इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेस एंड फील्ड्स है इसलिए आज इसी पर बात होगी यहीं से बात शुरू करते हैं साथ ही साथ मैं ये भी बता दूं कि मैं एन का जो किताब है उसी को रेफरेंस मान करके मैं व्याख्यान दूंगा तो सबसे पहले बात की जाए ये टॉपिक कहलाता है इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स चैप्टर आपका है इलेक्ट्रिक चार्जेस एंड फील्ड्स जब चार्ज की बात होती है तो सबसे पहला यही सवाल होता है कि आखिर ये चार्ज है क्या या क्यों हम चार्ज की बात करें एक चीज और है कि जब भी हम कोई किसी चीज को फिजिक्स में पढ़ते हैं तो उसका कहीं ना कहीं कहीं ना कहीं कोई दिखाई पड़ने वाला या न दिखाई पड़ने वाला पृथ्वी से जुड़ी हुई घटना है जिसका विश्लेषण करने के लिए हम जिसका विश्लेषणात्मक अध्ययन करने के लिए जिसका परिमाणात्मक व्याख्या व्याख्या क्वांटिटिव एनालिसिस करने के लिए हम उसका अध्ययन फिजिक्स में करते हैं तो एक बहुत सामान्य सी घटना है जो हम लोग आसपास अपने आसपास देखते हैं कि जैसे जाड़े के दिनों में आपने स्वेटर निकाला तो एक चटरिंग आवाज चटचट की आवाज निकलती है तो हमको कुछ समझ में नहीं आता है कि ये क्या हुआ या वो स्वेटर जो है अगर शरीर से शरीर के आसपास अगर टच करता है निकालने के बाद तो वो सारे रोए हाथ के और पैर के वो एकदम खड़े हो जाते हैं उसी प्रकार कभी कभी मॉस्किटो नेट में मान लिया आप आप सोए हुए हैं या उससे निकल रहे हैं उसके दो हिस्से आपस में टकराते हैं अगर कमरे में अंधेरा है तो अचानक से स्पार्किंग जैसा कुछ होता है आप आश्चर्यचकित हो जाते हैं कि भैया ये क्या हुआ बच्चों का खेल देखा जाए तो वही स्केल ले लिया स्केल लेने के बाद ऐसे 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 बाल में लगा करके उसको डस्ट पार्टिकल्स में लगाया या छोटे छोटे कागजों के बीच में लगाया तो वो देखा जाता है कि वो कागज स्केल में सट जाते हैं वो आकर्षित हो जाते हैं उसके तरफ तो सवाल है कि इन घटनाओं की व्याख्या कैसे की जाए किस रूप में की जाए जब इसका अध्ययन किया गया तो आप आप इस इस समय ये कह सकते हैं कि पदार्थ में कुछ तो ऐसा परिवर्तन होता है कुछ मैं शब्द का प्रयोग कर रहा हूं कुछ तो ऐसा परिवर्तन होता है जिसके कारण उसमें चीजों को आकर्षित करने का सामर्थ्य आ जाता है अब ये परिवर्तन क्या होता है तो पुराने वैज्ञानिकों ने इसको चार्ज कहा इलेक्ट्रिक चार्ज कहा कि भाई सिल्क का टुकड़ा लो उस पर अगर ग्लास के टुकड़े को रगड़ो तो ग्लास के टुकड़े में जो आता है उसको चार्ज बोलते हैं उस चार्ज के कारण उसमें चीजों को आकर्षित करने का करने का गुण आ जाता है वास्तव तो में ये घटनाएं बहुत पहले से देखी जाती रही हैं 
बाद में समय समय पर बहुत तरह के सिद्धांत आए लोगों ने कुछ कहा किसी ने कुछ कहा किसी ने कहा कि भाई एक अदृश्य द्रव है जो एक पदार्थ से दूसरे पदार्थ में चला जाता है बाद के लोगों ने कहा कि नहीं नहीं दो तरफ का दो तरह का द्रव होता है जो एक दूसरे में अनबैलेंस हो जाता है पदार्थों को रगड़ने के बाद और इस अनबैलेंस के द्वारा चीज़ों को आकर्षित करने का गुण आ जाता है बस इतना तो निश्चित हुआ कि कुछ है जो पदार्थ के गुणों के कारण है उसमें पदार्थ के मूलभूत गुणों के कारण है उसमें और वो वो जब परिवर्तन उसमें होता है तो उस परिवर्तन से उसमें चीजों को आकर्षित करने का गुण आ जाता है तो लिख सकते हैं कि इलेक्ट्रिक चार्ज चार्ज इज रिलेटेड टू राइट नाउ रिलेटेड टू द इंटरनल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ मैटर that when changes the material gets ability to attract or रिपल डिफरेंट अदर ऑब्जेक्ट दिस इज द फर्स्ट ऑब्जर्वेशन राइट नाउ वॉट एवर द थिंग्स आई एम डिस्कसिंग इज टोटली बेस्ड ऑन ऑब्जर्वेशन एंड हाउ ऑब्जर्वेशन वेर टेकन फर्दर for its analysis and giving the quantitative quantitative detail later on uh, it will be considered next thing uh, is that by observation it was found that this charge is of two categories and there exists a force of repulsion between same categories and the force of attraction force of attraction exists between opposite categories
this was totally observation and later on with on the basis of just to is isko डिफ्रेंशिएट करने के लिए इसको अलग अलग करने के लिए इन दोनों अलग अलग गुणों को अलग अलग नाम दिया गया एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस दीज कैटेगरीज were named as positive and negative this is the time now to explain because we we will hum log ko ye zarurat nahi hai ki हम इसके पुराने ऐतिहासिक डिटेल में जाएं कि पहले लोगों ने क्या कहा उसके बाद लोगों ने क्या कहा आज हम एटॉमिक स्ट्रक्चर जानते हैं परमाणविक संरचना जानते हैं और उसके आधार पर हम जानते हैं कि परमाणु में मूलतः इन इन एनाथम देयर एग्जिस्ट ओनली थ्री फंडामेंटल पार्टिकल्स दे आर न्यूट्रॉन एंड इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड प्रोट्रॉन एंड देयर इट सेल्फ उसी केमिस्ट्री में हम ये पढ़ते हैं फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री में कि भैया इसमें प्रोटोन में कुछ होता है चार्ज जिसको बोलते हैं पॉजिटिवली चार्ज होता है और इलेक्ट्रॉन निगेटिवली चार्ज होता है प्रोटोन एंड न्यूट्रॉन रिमेन्स इन द सेंटर ऑफ द मॉलिक्यूल एंड द इलेक्ट्रॉन रिवॉल्व अराउंड the number of proton and electrons are uh, equal so when we know this uh, fundamental structure of the matter then we can think and we can say hum ye bol sakte hain ki jo proton mein hota hai electron mein jo hota hai उसे ही चार्ज करते हैं क्या होता है उसमें दिमाग लगाने की जरूरत नहीं क्यों होता है इसका भी जवाब खोजने की जरूरत नहीं द नेचर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन और प्रोट्रॉन इज दैट मेक्स देम टू एक्सर्ट फोर्स इन देम और फोर्स ऑन सम अदर मटेरियल इज इज द चार्ज जो कारण इलेक्ट्रॉन या प्रोट्रॉन में दूसरे पदार्थों पर बल लगाने के लिए प्रेरित करता है वही कारण चार्ज है और प्रोट्रॉन में वो कारण एक तरह का होता है इलेक्ट्रॉन में वो कारण दूसरे तरह का होता है सो ऑन दिस बेसिस वी टेल दैट द प्रोट्रॉन इज हैविंग पॉजिटिव चार्ज and electron is having the negative charge as it is clear that uh, the electrons and protons in fact decide that what kind of charge will be there on the body and in fact the movement of electron the transfer of electron the change in the uh, number of electrons available in the uh, molecule or in the in fact the atom of a material decides um, the decides whether the body will be there positively charged or negatively charged it is quite clear that when the uh, amount of electron will be more than the proton on the body it will be negatively charged and the amount of pro if electrons are taken out from the body then uh, the amount of protons will be excess in its nucleus so the body is called as positively charged now there is one more thing that on the basis of uh, the internal characteristics of uh, materials it is found that some of the uh, you know the materials available in the world can be kept in two categories very very, very basic things i am telling most of us or all of us almost know about this 
that uh, all the available materials in the world are kept in two categories. One is that through which the electrons are allowed to pass. They, they have the uh, permission for the electrons. Uh, yes, they have the permission for the electrons to pass through them. Such bodies are called conductors. And uh, some of the bodies are there, they, they do not, some of the materials are there, they do not allow electrons to pass through them. So they are called bad conductors. You know, the copper wire and all, almost all the metals are having uh, the permission for the electrons to pass through them. While bad conductors are like wood and, uh, uh, you know, non-metals, uh, cloth, and different other things are there uh, through which the electrons cannot pass. So on this basis, the materials are called uh, insulators. So conductors are those through which electrons can pass, that means charge can pass. And insulators are those through which charge cannot pass. Now, you know, when the body is charged, it produces some effects. That is a known fact. Now, these effects are due to presence of charge on the body and the charge is static. Charge is at rest. So, when a body, when on a static body, when a body is there static and charge is created by some mean on that and that charge produces effect in the surrounding and we study about those effects. Then this study is kept in a specific branch of physics called as electrostatics. The electron in electron at rest when the electrons are at rest and the effects are produced and we study about those effects, then that comes for study in a specific branch of physics called electrostatics. When a body is charged, its effect the effect of charge is seen in the outside world in different ways In other words, these specific effects are caused by having charge on the body which is at rest. So, the branch of physics that deals with effect of charge at rest is called electrostatics.
Now here one more thing I want to point out that the presence of charge in a body is studied, is observed, is known by a specific instrument called electroscope. You know, electroscope is a device that determines the presence of charge on a body and also its nature. You know, in the book you will find this. This is uh, uh, the diagram of uh, gold leaf electroscope. Here uh, I am indicating this. Let me zoom it. You are observing this is indicated. The gold leaf, the glass window, the rubber, uh, uh, you know, closing and metal knob and metal rod. Now, you see, when um, a charged rod is made in contact with a metal knob, the charge passes through the metal rod on the conductor and then uh, charge is available on the uh, faces of the gold leaf also. And uh, since these faces get same charge, they get the force of repulsion in them by nature and they deflect. So the deflection in the gold foil in gold leaf electroscope ultimately tells about the presence of charge on the body. The presence of charge on the body so there is no need to write the uh, details about all those things now when we are studying about charge and its effect in physics there must have some quantitative uh, approach of studying them So the first thing uh, that comes to uh, define or to uh, set charge or to study charge in a quantitative way is a law called as Coulomb's law. In fact, this uh, Coulomb was uh, a scientist. Uh, here in the book it is written about him. His full name is Charles Augustin de Coulomb. He was the first who quantitatively studied the charge and in fact the effect of charge. So Coulomb's law tells that uh, But before talking about Coulomb's law, there is one more thing to talk about. I was telling that electroscope is a device that determines the presence of charge on a body and also its nature. Now, here it is necessary to point out some of the characteristics of charge before we go the details of this.
this is very important to keep in mind as uh, rest of the studies and assumptions are based on these characteristics. Some basic characteristics of charge. Pahla. Being in two opposite nature charges can charges have the ability to neutralize each other and thus net charge on the body is the algebraic sum of different charges given on the body. That is, for example, when a body is given A1 minus A2 plus A1 means positive charge plus A1 minus A2 minus A3 plus A4 plus A5 charge then here plus indicates positive charge while minus the negative charge. The net charge present on the body will be A1 minus A2 minus A3 plus A4 plus A5. Signs are considerable. Now second is by the law of conservation of mass it is known
that the whole mass present in the universe is fixed charge is a resultant of mass only so yes charge is since a resultant of mass that means atomic structure total amount of charge in the universe is also fixed and third which is very important to keep in mind and consider that the unit of charge the uh, not not like that you can say not the unit because unit has a different meaning the charge is available available as unit blocks of charge on electron or proton this means that as a multiple of charge on electron or proton the charge in the world is represented this means that
this is very important to remember this means that charge ya quantity amount of charge is expressed in terms of integral multiples of charge available on electron or proton this is uh, this is also called as charge is quantized you know charge is not uh, this means that suppose water flow is going on then water appears continuously flowing and flowing and flowing practically visually you can take any small amount it is not so that you know, like uh, ice cubes water is coming like uh, you know blocks or packets but the flow of charge from one body to another is not like water it is like ice cubes you can understand one ice cube uh, is analogous or similar to one electron so the charge of electron or proton cannot be divided the unit of charge the unit value of charge that is available in the universe is the charge on electron or proton so this it means uh, telling that uh, the charge is quantized because this is only electron that that is being transferred from one place to another so whatever is there on the electron in terms of which the transfer of charge or the availability of charge is set so uh, in this way also you can uh, consider that in integral multiples like twice or thrice or uh, 10 to the power 9 times 10 to the power 100 times uh, than the charge on electron so in this way this is expressed this is the meaning of quantization in the book there is a question also see uh, in the example it is told that 10 to the power 9 electrons move out of a body to another body every second how much time is required to get a total charge of 1 coulomb in the body so Uh, let us say 10 to the power 9 electrons this is example uh, let me change the color uh, that will be better ten to the power 9 electrons move per second time taken to get 1 coulomb of charge don't be surprised by the name this coulomb in the beginning because next to this we are going to define it so you should know this is this is a fact to remember and keep in mind always that 
a charge the amount of charge on an electron or proton is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so in a second in one second number of electrons passing uh, 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 in one second amount of charge passed equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 into 10 to the power 9 this is equivalent to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 10 coulomb this is in one second this this per second so here i am writing so for 1 coulomb of charge 1 upon 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 10 second that is 6 point something into 10 to the power 10 second this is somehow more than much much more than the human life so this is all today uh, rest of the things next day i will consider